بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم ڈیئر اسٹوڈنٹس وی ور ڈسکسنگ دا ٹاپک آف ڈبلیو بی سی امنگ دیٹ ٹو ڈے وی ول ڈسکس ایسنوفیس بیزوفیل لیوکوپینیا اینڈ لیوکینیاز تھرو دس اینیمیشن you can see the different types of the WBC neutrophil, eosinophil and basophil especially having the granules up till now we have thoroughly discussed the function of the neutrophil and also its developmental stages today we will focus the eosinophil and basophils almost 2% of the total leukocytes these are the eosinophils which are weak phagocytes and exhibit chemotaxis they produce in large numbers in people with parasitic infections they attach themselves to the parasites by way of special surface molecules and release substances that kill many of these parasites through this animation i want to show you how it look like they kill parasites in several ways Number one way is the releasing hydrolytic enzyme from their granules. As I have told you that these WBC, they are granulocytes. So from these granules, they release the hydrolytic enzymes which are modified lysosome through which they kill the parasites. they also kill by way of releasing highly reactive forms of oxygen that are especially lethal to the parasites and also from the granules a highly polypeptide chain which is called the major basic protein that can be released and destroy the parasites these cells are very important in allergic reactions also for example in bronchial tissues in people with asthma and in skin after allergic reaction mast cells and basophils release an eosinophil chemotactic factor that causes eosinophils to migrate towards these allergic reactions uh, allergic tissues we will discuss the allergic reaction and hypersensitive reaction in much more detail later on but here i am just introducing the function of the eosinophil regarding the allergic reaction one more thing about the mast cells what are these cells i also to tell, i will also tell you about these mast cell in the following slides but here you can say that mast cells and basophil they are going together and performing a combined action regarding the allergic reaction the eosinophil also detoxify some of the inflammation induced substances released by mast cells and the basophil that phagocytosed and destroy the allergen by the diagram i will show you the function of these cells later on so that this function regarding the allergic reaction become more clear to you 
What is eosinophilia? It is just the raised number or increased number of eosinophil in the blood. And mostly seen during the allergic conditions. As during allergic reaction, there is very very important role of the eosinophil. So, whenever there is antigen antibody reaction, allergic reaction is there, the number of eosinophil increases many folds. The opposite terminology to eosinophilia is the eosinophenia, which is the decreased number of eosinophils. Coming to the next cell, that is the basophils. They are the least common and they are also granulocyte. They are similar to the large tissue mast cells located outside many of the capillaries. Both mast cells and basophils liberate heparin. This histamine is also released by these cells and smaller quantities of bradykinin and serotonin. It is mainly the mast cells in inflamed tissues that release these substances during inflammation. This is a very nice picture of basophil having the granules. Mast cells and basophil both play an important role in allergic reaction. Because IgE antibody has a tendency to attach to the mast cells and basophil. Here I must show the picture and reaction. Specific antigen combines with the specific IgE antibody so that the mast cell or basophil they rupture and release large quantities of histamine, bradykinin, serotonin ester and other lysosomal enzyme and these cause allergic manifestations. Through this diagram you can see the antigen antibody reaction over mast cells. These are the receptive sites of the mast cells. These are IgE specific antigen attached to these receptors and whenever the specific antigen comes in contact with these antigen antibody reaction take place so that locally the histamine and other substances like serotonin, tumor necrosis vector they are released. So coming back to our previous topic that is specific antigen that reacts over the specific IgE antibody. This is the antigen antibody reaction. The result of that is the release of large quantity of very specific substances and these are the substances which are responsible for other manifestations of allergic reaction. For example, redness, swelling and pain, local pain and uh, phagocytosis, all these things. Remaining thing is what is the mast cells. These cells are very similar to both appearance and function to the basophils. It is again a type of granulocyte derived from the myelid stem cell that matures in tissues. It is a part of immune system and contains many granules rich in histamine and heparin. And it is very important for wound healing, angiogenesis, immune tolerance, defense against pathogen and also for the regulation of blood brain barrier permeability. So coming again to the same picture, you can see from this picture the structure of the mast cell very similar to other granulocytes like basophil. Then 
allergic manifestations over the face of the patient and here what is going on that is antigen antibody reaction take place A specific antibodies antigen come in contact with that so that from the granules these specific substances they are released and because of this local release of the of these substances other allergic manifestations take place this is a nice animation just to show you the allergic reaction if you have any specific drug intake which produce allergic response or any harmful antigen specific antigen to which your body is very allergic then this allergic response can be seen excessive swelling or as previously i have shown you these dots these uh, dots or the swelling that is the picture of allergic response or allergic reaction leukopenia what is that one it is actually the very few wbc so the ulcers appear in mouth and colon or there is severe respiratory infection why the infection severe is infection because decreased number of wbc as wbc they are mainly the cells which are defending our body so if their number is decrease or abnormally excessive immature cells are there obviously the infection has a good chance to spread all over the body and our body become unprotected against many invading organisms and leukocytosis is the opposite to previous in that we have the increased number of leukocytes and it may be observed in allergic reactions also as we need more and more wbc to deal with that reaction or in a specific type of the infections so their number increases to defend our body completely now coming to a very very serious dangerous disease leukemias it is characterized by greatly increased number of abnormal wbc in the blood in other words we can say the blood cancer what happens the abnormal wbc are there which are not capable to deal with the infection properly uncontrolled production of wbc can be caused by cancerous mutation how this mutation genetically occur i will tell you later on here i must tell you the main types lymphocytic and myelogenous but these types they are further subdivided also you can see the blood cancer here excessive number of abnormal wbc thousands of chromosomal abrasions have been discovered in different types of the cancer regarding the leukemias we have a number of changes especially we can have the translocation of dna between chromosome 9 and 22 
So this can be observed here in a very nice animation so that you can see again this is the abnormality occurring between the chromosome 9 and 22. Again, from this animation, you can see the abnormal lymphoblast present here. Leukemia cell development, how that is changed and that is becoming abnormally excessive production. Coming to again, uh, again coming to the classification of the blood cancer that is leukemia. Mainly we have two categories lymphocytic and myeloid. But they are subdivided into chronic lymphocytic leukemia, chronic myeloid leukemia, acute lymphocytic leukemia, and acute myeloid leukemia. Chronic Lymphocytic leukemia mostly strike people over the age of 55 years and it is rarely present in children. While chronic myeloid leukemia that affects mainly the adults. Acute lymphocytic leukemia mostly affects children. While Acute myeloid leukemia can affect both children and adults. Other types of leukemia, hair cell leukemia is a rare type of chronic leukemia is also present. From this picture, I want to show these acute and chronic leukemias. You can see the difference between the acute and chronic types through these pictures. The myelogenous leukemia, it is the cancerous production of young myelogenous cells in bone marrow and then spreads throughout the body so that WBC are produced in many extra medullary tissues, especially in the lymph nodes, spleen and the liver. What is the effect of this over our body? All types eventually spread to the liver, spleen, bone marrows. Very, very acute, sharp pain and fracture of bone that can take place. Repeated infections, anemia and increased bleeding tendency also. Repeated infection and our body is unable to cope with these infections. So that they may lead to the energy proteins, carbohydrates and vitamin depletion and eventually death. So that's the reason that this type of the disease cancer is very 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 dangerous lastly we have a specific terminology that is leukomite response what is that one a marked lipocytosis with neutrophilia and a left sheet back to at least myelocytes associated with an inflammatory condition. 
Why it is named so? Because it resembles blood pattern seen in chronic myeloid leukemia. That's why we discuss this here while discussing the leukemia topic. So this completes our today's lecture. Next time I will discuss the immune response, defensive response of our body further and we will discuss the immunity types and further discussion about immunity that is the next topic so keep with me until the next lecture okay thank you and allah peace